Oh, it's Yoda, hideous. Like Yoda looked older in the Phantom Menace for some yeah. reason. Welcome back guys. This is 191 Media. I'm Matt. And I'm Micah. And today we're going to be discussing the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer and also our thoughts about Season 1. <laughs> hey Peter. God dang it, Bobby. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Micah, what did you think about the Season 2 trailer? What were your thoughts about it? Uh, what did you like? What didn't you like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually, I thought the trailer was really good. Um, at the end of season one, I was trying to figure out, okay, we need more backstory in Baby Yoda. We don't just need him to be this like cutesy type character. And I know why Disney did that because they wanted to sell merchandise, of mm -hmm. course. But like season two, hopefully will show maybe like Mando and Baby Yoda going to different planets, trying to find out where, what Baby Yoda species name is, because we don't even know what the species name is for Baby Yoda and Yoda. Um, George Lucas just never re released that to anyone. Um, so I thought the trailer was really good. There was a point where there looked like there was a Jedi, and I thought that it may have been Ahsoka for anyone who's watched the cartoon Clone Wars series, um, but I don't think it was. What do you think, Matt? I, I looked up the yeah the, apparently you're right so they did say there's supposed to be the actor or actress sorry rosario dawson playing ahsoka in season two mandalorian however that didn't look like rosario dawson ahsoka has like the like the markings like the blue and was it blue and white markings on her face and i didn't really see that on there and didn't look like the same actress so i don't think ahsoka is going to be the only jedi in the season which would be cool i just hope that they don't really devolve the show into being, you know, just like, oh, well, it's another Jedi versus Sith kind of thing, right? Or light side versus dark side. Uh, yeah, I like the trailer a lot myself. I thought, I really noticed that they're using, they're still using real sets for most things and really appreciate that. It looks really good. And CGI is at a point now where the CGI also looks good, but it's definitely a huge step up from the prequel era back in the early 2000s, hey? Yeah, I like that they're actually using all the real sets. They're going back to more makeup and prosthetics for the characters instead of the crappy way they did all the aliens in the prequels. I mean, I, I love the prequels, but they look so bad in today by today's standards. <laughs> yeah, and kind of what I was saying a little bit before in the podcast, I'm hoping that Baby Yoda just isn't just this selling toy for for young girls and for 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 women to be buying him online and stuff like that right like i know disney was very smart in the way they marketed this show um but i, I still think it's one of the better um star wars products that have been that's come out for 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 quite a while what do you think yeah i agree with you man i i was really disappointed that in season one the all it seemed like the only reason that baby yoda was there was to, I guess the real name is the child as they call it, right? So the child is there just to be cute and sell merch because literally I'd be, you know, do, living my life and doing whatever in public. And there's this one time there's a group of young girls just, it was at this ski resort I was at and they're just there just chanting over and over, baby Yoda over and over. And literally, I, I think from your experience too, like every girl just loves Baby Yoda, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I was disappointed that they didn't expand on that in season one. I understand why they didn't, because they want to leave some, I guess, mystery to it and allow more seasons to go through. But I thought uh, season one devolved into almost like, a, almost like if people have seen Clone Wars, almost like a non overarching story in the grand scheme of things for the most part like there was like there's a huge looming factor of who is this character what's the backstory what's the name of the species and really wanted to find out more but they just didn't delve into it it just became mando and baby yoda go here find a new friend then they go here find a new friend do this do that and then they meet some people along the way and then like that one woman met him for like 20 minutes and proposed to marry yeah i mean there's <laughs> I wish that it wasn't just like almost more of like a short little serial type episodes. Yeah. Like I'm hoping that season three, when it does come out, however many, maybe a couple of years from now, like I'm hoping that maybe Baby Yoda is a bit older, but then again, it wouldn't be the Mandalorian because we need the Mando in the show. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the sec season two trailer, Matt, um, they were talking about the, I think it was the blacksmith for the Mandalorians. She was talking about um, 
So Jedi versus Mandalorians, and there was a big war back then too. Do you think they might try to talk about that more in the, sh in the show? Do you think they might try to introduce a few more Jedi? Like you mentioned that one that we see in the trailer might be a potential Jedi. I think they might. I think, I think they will because, yeah, like you said, the blacksmith, she narrated the trailer, I believe. It kind of sounded exactly like her voice. And I do think they're going to start throwing Jedi into this. I feel like there, wasn't there some other characters they're going to add to it? Like, wasn't Boba Fett referenced as well in it? It's, oh, it, like, I feel like I just, I really hope they don't make this just like a fan service kind of series where it's like, oh, guess what? We have this character. Let's put them in the series too to draw views and sell more merch, right? Well, uh, it's like Ahsoka makes sense because she was a good character in the Clone Wars, but like if they just bring in Boba Fett, that's complete fan service. Yeah. But I mean, like it's not like Boba Fett did much in the original movies anyway, but so Matt, do you think we'll ever find out the name, the species name for Baby Yoda and for Yoda? That is a good question. I think they're gonna release that. I think they will. I think if they do do it, it's gonna be the last episode of the last Mando season, whenever that's whenever that is, whether it's five years from now, six years, set, whatever, it's gonna be the last episode. I'm pretty sure. I just feel like they're gonna keep the mystery around it because I think isn't George Lucas consulting on the show? I think so. And I, I yeah, I, I just think he's gonna keep it a mystery. What do you think? I kind of hope that they don't explain what Baby Yoda's species name is because I like. The reason I like Yoda so much is because you it's the mystery surrounding him. He's like one of the only species that doesn't have a name for himself. Um, yeah, but we, uh, hopefully they don't just like try to milk it for that. But I'm, I'm pretty sure like from what I gathered from like the first season, they don't do things quickly. They like to draw things out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like you said, it's probably gonna take, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the Mandalorian is gonna keep on going for probably another three or four seasons is popular enough. So I have a question for you, Micah. What are your thoughts on the fan theory that Baby Yoda or the child is the love child of Yaddle and Yoda? I'm just waiting for the Yaddle comic series. <laughs> and that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. No one said that <laughs> ever. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, Yaddle was a character in The Phantom Menace who showed up, I think because George Lucas just wanted to have a female version of Yoda for some reason, and it looked even worse than the puppet Yoda that was in The Phantom Menace. <laughs> yeah, you know, usually like all the prequel CGI was really bad, but in my opinion, Yoda, the puppet Yoda was worse than CGI Yoda. I thought CGI Yoda was actually done way better than puppet Yoda. Well, CGI Yoda looked good, but you can't take away from the fact of what they did with Yoda and The Empire Strikes Back. Like, he just looked so cool, man, in my opinion. It, it looked proper in the original trilogy, for sure. And Return of the Jedi. Absolutely. But, like, for some reason, it looked really hideous when they, <laughs> when they did it in The Phantom Menace. Oh, it's Yoda, hideous! Like, Yoda looked older in The Phantom Menace for some yeah. reason. I don't know why, like, because it was, it was a puppet in The Phantom Menace. I don't know what was going on there, but I, it could be a possibility, but at this time, The Mandalorian takes place after Yoda dies, so I feel like there's not really much of a point for it. Um, maybe it might just be like fan service at that point too. What do you think? I, th I in my like theories, I think that makes sense. In my theories, because it's like the timeline makes sense from the when uh, Yaddle and Yoda were, I guess technically, hanging out at the Jedi Council. They could have had some good times, and then you know, like timeline works out. Because how many years ahead is that? Is it like? 60, 50 or 60 years ahead? From the Phantom Menace? Yeah, because um, it's after. It's probably like at least 40 to 50 years. Yeah, so then. And the child's like 50. Yeah, so there you go, right? The, yeah. the timeline works out, but who knows, right? But yeah. there, I hopefully, maybe, it would be cool if they found a world where Baby Yoda species are on and you just see all these like force sensitive Yoda characters because the species is, mostly force sensitive it seems yeah. so i hope that the child can start talking and it also talks like yoda for some reason <laughs> mm. strong in the force i am so when mandalorian season one the finale kind of ended on kind of a showdown almost like a almost like a western shootout kind of showdown and it showed moff gideon 
with a dark saber, which was first introduced in the Clone Wars series. And it's really a mystery on how he got that. What are your thoughts on that scene? Yeah, I thought that was a really cool scene because it, it, it almost harkens back to the Clone Wars and it's, it really kind of pays off for the people that have watched the cartoon because I feel like a lot of Star Wars fans just watch the movies and TV shows. Um, so it was a nice kind of throwback for those fans for the Clone Wars. And the, th the last time I remember, who the last person that had the Darksaber, wasn't it Darth Maul? I think, I think it was, yeah. yeah. So somehow, I guess that was a long time afterwards, but somehow it got, in, it got into the hands of Moff, Moff Gideon, who's one of the top uh, Moffs in the Empire. Even though the Empire is kind of a former shell of itself, but it's still trying to make its way in the galaxy right now. Um, I like the idea of the Darksaber, so I'm hoping, I'm actually thinking, I think it's still a theory out in the internet, but people, some people are thinking Moff Gideon will fight Ahsoka. Oh, that would make sense actually. That seems likely because why would they start adding uh, Jedi, to, or sorry, why would they show Moff Gideon with the Darksaber? Because when I saw that I was like, oh, what is he going to use that on? So yeah, you just go kill people and cut them up and stuff, but then it'd be cool if there was a Jedi to fight, which now this is making sense, right? Mm -hmm. And I think with Star Wars it's not strong enough to be on its own with just like guns and, and just anything else like that there needs to be a jedi because people still want to watch that in the end it's still the most interesting portion of it for for me i agree it makes it definitely a lot better but they have done you know good material without it like rogue one even though there was a scene with darth vader at the end but that was just pure fans they could have left that totally out and it would be still a good movie right mm -hmm. but that kind of just elevated it to be like yeah watch this whole movie to see this badass one minute scene, right? Oh yeah, well Rogue Run was a whole fan service movie pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there was no reason for that movie, but hey, they pulled it off really well, right? Hundreds of Bothans died to get this information. Where were the Bothans? <laughs> <laughs> They're racist, they left them out. Disney has destroyed my love. <laughs> All right guys, thanks for watching. I'm Matt and this is Micah. <clears throat> if like our channel you do, like, comment and subscribe you must. Ha ha ha.